So looking at page 53, we get into uh, some in product identities and some identities involving secant and cosecant and all that good stuff. All right? Some easier than others, but they all kind of rely on your ability to recognize a rule when it's in play. All right? What I'll do, though, is just very quickly off on the side, just like I did on the previous page, is I'm just going to show you where uh, one or more of these rules come from. I, I think I'll just show you one of them. All right, so if we think back to the sine A plus B identity, or X plus Y, if you're more familiar with it that way, we're looking at sine A cosine B plus cosine A sine B. All right, if we look at the difference identity, it's the same, same but different. All right, same in that the structure is identical except it would have a minus sign. All right. So if I were to add these two things together, all right, so just add them, just a quick sum, I would get sine A plus B plus sine A minus B. All right. Now, if we add the right-hand side, you'll see that we have two, uh, two sets of opposite terms that'll cancel. All right, so these go away. And so what we would have, if I just kind of smidge this over, one sine A cosine B plus another sine A cosine B, so two of those sine A cosine Bs. So now, if I want to just find out what sine A cosine B is, I could just divide both sides by 2. All right. In which case, we would arrive at a fresh new rule. All right. Sine A cosine B is equal to 1 half sine A plus B plus, four quality plus, one half sine A minus B. Or you could represent it the way it's given in the chart here, in the table or whatever it's called, with the one half as a multiplier. But what I'll do, just like I did on the previous page, is I'll just kind of tuck in this variation of it. Okay. So if we have two differing values as arguments for sine and cosine, then you would apply this rule. In very similar fashion, using the cosine sum and difference identities, we arrive at two additional rules. I'll just kind of leave it to you to, to work that out. It's using the same principle, all right? You're just adding the two together and then solving for the relevant uh, uh, product of factors, all right? So looking at this, I see that I have an A value, quote unquote, A value here of 5x and a B value of 4x. So this is my A, and this is my B. All right, so in expanding this, I'd be looking at 1 half sine A plus B. All right, so 9x. All right, so that's my A plus B part of it. That's this guy right here. Plus 1 half sine A minus B. All right, A minus B, 5x minus 4x is just x. Much easier to integrate. All right, maybe you would need to use something like U substitution if you didn't do if you didn't use this technique but this is this is very nice and easy to integrate now all right so the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine so i know i'm going to have a negative i'm going to have a one half i'm going to have a reciprocal of the coefficient of x so one ninth so cosine of nine x i know that the, again the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine so i'm going to have a negative i'm going to have the one half the coefficient of the x it's just a 1. 1 over 1 is 1. So cosine of x plus c, then it's just a matter 
of a little bit of housekeeping and we're done. Negative 1 over 18, cosine 9x. Minus 1 over 2, cosine of x. Plus c. Alright. So, only one example there because they're, they're all variations on that, that same idea. Alright. Now, if we have a product of secant and tangent or cosecant and cotangent, well, if you think about secants and tangents, so if I were to tell you find the antiderivative of secant times tangent without the powers, odds are you're probably looking at, I mean, not even odds are, you are looking at a secant because the derivative of secant is secant times tangent. If you have something that contains just a, a secant squared, the derivative of tangent is secant squared. So we rely on this information and general knowledge to get us part of the way. The other part of the way comes from manipulating expressions so that we can get it into a more convenient form. All right. So I say you'll need to remember. It's kind of like uh, my way of saying, well, you, it would be great if you remembered these. If not, you can always invent them. All right. So we know that sine squared I'll use theta because they use theta, plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. If I divide everything by sine squared theta, I'm going to get 1 plus cotangent squared theta is equal to cosecant squared theta. Yep, cosecant squared theta. So that's this rule. I could do the same thing, this time not dividing by sine squared, but dividing by cosine squared. I'll just do it all in one shot like I did before. So for that, we would get tangent squared theta plus 1 is equal to secant squared theta. All right. So that's this rule. And you know what? I'll just swap the order because make it consistent with the order in which it's presented. And there you go. All right. So you know the rules. As long as you know sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1, you can always invent these. So, I want to be able to apply these rules. I see here, in the little notation, ask yourself, can I save a secant squared or a secant tangent? That's what I was saying before, is that we know the derivative of tangent and secant squared, derivative of secant is secant tangent. All right, so if we could save one of those, then we, we have a built-in part of it that we can anti-differentiate. All right, so, well, secant squared, I'm not going to be able to save, quote unquote, sta save, without uh, some kind of uh, substitution happening first. So let me see about the secant tangent. Right. So I'm going to save a secant x tangent x. And if I do that, I'll have a tangent to the fourth of x. Maybe this is the wrong way to go. Maybe it's not. It, it, it all depends. You know, sometimes with these kind of problems, you have to go down one pathway in order to realize it's not the right pathway. But I see I don't have a rule for tangent to the fourth. I do have a rule for tangent squared. All right. So tangent squared squared is equal to tangent to the fourth. So that's something. It's not really anything too earth shattering. It's more algebraic than anything else, but I do know that tangent squared, just going back up here to this rule, well, tangent squared plus one is secant squared, but if I subtract a one from both sides, I get tangent is equal to secant squared minus one.
All right. So now I'm just kind of looking at it saying, all right, do I have what I need? Is it going to work? And what do I mean by is it going to work? Well, based on the strategies that we've learned so far, is there a technique that I could use that will get me the rest of the way? Well, I think. Well, let's investigate. All right. So we know that there are trig rules involved. All right. Some of those trig rules are great, but they don't always get the job done. All right. So if that doesn't work, then we try the next thing that we learned, which would be U substitution. All right. So can I identify a U that will help me, quote unquote, get the job done? All right. So if I let U equal secant tangent, that's that's not going to help. All right. Because the derivative of secant tangent is going to involve the product rule and it's going to be a mess. I can't see how that's going to help us cancel out secant squared minus one. If I let u equal secant squared, that would be two times secant x times secant x tangent x. Well, it's got part of what we need, but, but it's got a little bit more than what we need. But if I let u equal secant x, then du dx would be equal to secant x tangent of x. So I'll write du is equal to secant x tangent x dx. All right, so I'll be able to swap out the secant and also the secant x dx. Do that in a different color, I already use yellow. So anything highlighted in green is going to get replaced with a du. We'll have u squared minus 1 squared, which we could actually distribute. Right? Maybe we wouldn't want to distribute it when it's got the secant in there, but using u squared, it actually looks a little bit more appealing. So u squared minus 2, oh, I'm sorry, right off the bat I screwed that up, u to the 4, the outers will be negative u squared and negative u squared, so negative 2u squared plus 1 du. Increase the exponent by 1, divide by the new exponent. And then bring back my u. So 1 fifth secant to the fifth of x minus 2 thirds secant to the third of x plus secant of x plus c. And there you go.